And there in this city of Chengdu, um, she begins to work in a leper colony where there are desperate people with this terrible illness separated from others. And she again preaches this gospel and people become Christians. And um, a great work begins there. And a Chinese pastor came and he took the Lord's Supper there on an Easter Friday. And he wrote this. Before she, Gladys, came, the lepers were quarrelsome and jealous without hope and fighting among themselves. But on that Friday evening before Easter, when we took communion and shared out the bread and the wine among the men, they came with their diseased bodies and their deformed hands, but their eyes were alight with joy. And this leper colony became a place of prayer. And they heard that in the prison in Chengtu, there weren't, there wasn't any gospel preaching there no one had heard about Jesus and so the lepers began to pray for the men in the prison and Gladys Aylward and others an amazing picture of her in that very prison came in and a work began there very slowly it took a long time but she was very concerned about one young man who was a murderer and he should have been he was going to be executed but he was too young and because they felt he was dangerous he was covered in shackles in big chains um, and one night they persuaded him to come to the meeting uh, in the prison where they were singing, uh, Jesus breaks every fetter. That means every shackle. Jesus breaks every fetter. Um, and the man leading the meeting thought, oh gosh, we can't sing this with this man here in all these chains on his hands and around his body and around his feet. And so he began to sing a song, I need Jesus. And this young man said to Gladys Elwood, I need Jesus. Can you pray for me? So they prayed for him. And then she felt in her heart they should pray that God would get these shackles off him, that the prison authorities would feel um, compassion for him and take them off And because they were so heavy and difficult for him. Um, two nights later, he's in his cell and he sees a light in the corner of the cell and he hears a voice say, get up and follow me. And he begins to shout to the others in the cell. There were six of them. Jesus Christ is in this cell. Jesus Christ is in this cell. And as they wake, they see this fading light and they look and they see that he's holding um, this man is just sitting holding his locked chains, but they're not round his arms and round his wrists anymore. And the guard comes in because he hears them shouting. Um, and, and as he comes in, he sees the man sitting there holding his chains. And he says, what on earth happened? Who's unlocked you? He said, Jesus Christ took off my chains. He said, he's been in this cell. Can't you smell his fragrance? And there was a beautiful fragrance. The governor called Gladys over to come over the next day and she came, she went with the governor and they smelt that fragrance in that place. It caused a huge stir what had happened both in the prison and across that city because God had done an extraordinary thing. There's another amazing story told where Gladys Aylward went with the doctor out to a far remote region. They travelled for 10 days just talking to people about Jesus as they went, but it got more and more remote. And on day 10, Gladys is concerned. She said, look, we haven't got food tonight. We haven't got shelter tonight. Um, what are we going to do? Let's pray to God for it. Um, and he said, let's let's pray to God that we would find someone tonight to share the gospel with and to talk about Jesus with. Um, and she's so challenged because she thinks, well, all I wanted was some food and to stay the night somewhere comfy. But he wants to still talk to people. And so they pray and they begin to sing and worship God. And incredibly, a man suddenly appears and he's a Buddhist monk, uh, a, a lama, he's called. And he's there and he says, we've been waiting for you to come. And they say, waiting for us? How did you know we were coming? He said, I'll take you in to meet uh, the, the leader of our monastery. And they go and the huge monastery is there in this remote area with 500 of these Buddhist monks. And the man said, We'd, we've heard, we've read the gospel and we have these words. We've read Mark's gospel and John's gospel and we have these words that God so loved the world, but we don't know uh, very much about it. Can you come and talk to us? And so they speak to these 500 um, Buddhist monks and they have one question these monks want to ask. Will you explain to us why Jesus Christ died? And so Gladys Elwood and this doctor, they stay for a whole week there sharing with these men um, and many became Christians. They heard later that when the communists came, they destroyed that monastery and many of the monks were scattered abroad. But how amazing God had done something so wonderful.
She stayed in that same area and worked in a place where there was a very neglected Methodist church and she felt that God spoke to her. This was back down in Chengdu to get this big church ready and the people said, we don't need this big church. And she said, I feel that God is saying he wants to do something here. Um, and so they began to clear the church and clean the church um, and renovate it um, and get it ready. Um, and then a great and wonderful work happened there. Many, many hundreds of people in that area, particularly young people, university students, became Christians. She wrote, the ground had been prepared by incessant earnest prayer and blessings swept through the church and the city. Hundreds were truly converted, including many university students, for several months we continued in glorious blessing it almost seemed that we'd gone back to the days of the early church and then at that time some American missionaries came and joined them in that Methodist church um, and one of them said I hear you speak in that northern um, Chinese dialect he said I've heard there was an extraordinary woman called our way day um, who worked in that region and God used her in a mighty way did you ever manage to meet her and Gladys Airwood replied I am our way day and he was astonished and amazed and talked with her and he said to her how long since you've been back home to England and she said about 17 years and he said why don't you go back she said I don't even know where to get the money from for tomorrow night's supper I can never go back to England again credibly that man was married to a woman who had raised money uh, to be to send um, missionaries who had no money left back to their countries and particularly to Germany um, and they had some funds left and they had no missionary to give it to and he said I know who we're going to give it to they said she wept when the Chinese pastor ran up the road saying we've got the tickets Gladys we've got the tickets you're going to go back home she traveled to Shanghai on the way back where she met uh, many of the children who had been on that journey with her they're now grown up fantastic picture of her with that little girl not a little girl anymore, Ninepence, who she'd found by the road, who would have died that day, except for her. And here she is with her little boy, uh, and Gladys is like a grandma to him. But communism was closing in. She's in Shanghai. She's got those tickets to go back, and she returns back to England. She's got no money or possessions to speak of, no British citizenship, no property, no job, no career. In fact, she said, I came back to England with absolutely nothing but the knowledge that God had never failed me. And there she is, and she is standing uh, on Liverpool Street Station. She must have thought, whoa, look what God has done. And her parents are there, and she doesn't recognise them. And they, they're looking for her, and all they can see is a little Chinese woman standing with greying hair. And then they realise it's our glad, as they used to call her. And the whole family is, is reunited again. We're just going to pray. God, we thank you for this wonderful story uh, that she came back with nothing, uh, but really she'd got everything because she had you um, and she knew that you had never failed her. Lord, we praise you that you never fail us. Amen. Amen.